Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have alternative rock band Never Summer. What's going on? Hey, what's up? I just wanted to dig in uh, some history. Like, um, could you like introduce yourselves and what instrument you play? Well, mine is Mario. I play bass in the band. Uh, I'm Kenny. Um, I play uh, guitar, specifically rhythm. And he sings. He Don't he let him sound so and so. So he, he sings. He has some back of beautiful pipes, beautiful pipes. Yeah, I sing and I do some of the songwriting with Howie here. Absolutely. And uh, my name's Howard. I sing. And yeah, Kenny and I work together to write some songs. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, just these guys push me along. I'm the caboose on the train. I'm just sitting <laughs> around for the ride. Happy to be here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we don't have the full band here, but we've got a, we've got a good chunk. Could we uh, go in a couple of musical influences? Get her started, Mario. Um, I mean, like, I grew up listening to, like, really classic, like, metal, as in, like, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. That was, that was like, my initial introduction into that, like, genre of music. And I was actually, I'm not actually a very fluent bassist. I've actually played guitar for over 20 years. I've only picked up bass to play specifically in this band. <laughs> and it's honestly, it's been a lot of fun, but like it's made me go back and look at like all these other bands I listen to and like look at it a completely different way. Like as I'm like, oh, there's the basses in this band. That's different. I was never, <laughs> I was only ever looked at the guitar. I know they had like, band. It was, yeah, I was like, I already made a Judas Priest and then I got into metalcore. It was like Devil Wars Prada and Tack Attack and Beartooth and. Then, like, I went to college and started listening to, like, hippie stuff. Jam bands. <laughs> yeah. Well, not like Fish, but, like, Fish is playing ping pong. And I don't know. A, you lot, know, a lot of the influence came from, like, the, the Iron Maiden, like, the melodic uh, classic metal. I mean, at least. You know, I had a guy at work. The other day I worked at a music hall, and he was like, I don't care for jam bands, but I like Fish. I'm like, you like the jam band. Like, you <laughs> yeah, don't that, like jam like bands, but you like jam the band. jam band. Other than, like, the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, well. Would you like to take the stage, sir? Sure. Um, I'm, like, you almost the complete opposite. Uh, a lot of my inspiration sure, sure. was, a, like, a lot of the indie yes, music sure. in the 2000s. Um, That's a right there. We can check it uh radiohead was a really big uh inspiration for me uh growing up from like a songwriting and a guitar like standpoint um and uh yeah i was never really big radiohead guy oh i know <laughs> but, but but paranoid android was like i remember hearing that for the first time and i was like oh yeah this that, is that, this is really... that's like a song that like changed my life oh yeah <laughs> yeah that was like the same but yeah, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the indies like Death Cab is mm -hmm. a giant influence on me. Um, mm -hmm. Transatlanticism, you know, that's like one of the first uh, big indie records I listened to. Really, honestly, you can just say that the OC soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> volume one was a giant inspiration <laughs> for me. No, no, no seriously. Right? Yeah. I mean, no, hey. uh, I learned Modest Mouse is on that. 
The Killers were on it. Death Cab was on it. Um, yeah, so a lot of that music was really inspirational for me. Oh, yeah. And now it's my turn. <laughs> now, if he's going to throw out the OC soundtrack, I'm going to throw out Tony Hawk's Pro yes, Skater yes, 1 through yes. 4. All right? Goldfinger is an absolute ripper. Bad Religion, I've seen them like four times. Only know you because of Tony Hawk's Pro Well, that's how I started listening to him. So that helped shape me. Or shape me. But um, big influence, first influence, was Depeche Mode. Oh, yeah. And I just... Anything Depeche Mode has released from 1980 all the way up until playing The Angel, I know every single word to every single song. Like they were my bread and butter growing up. Um, and then you know, on the uh, the Death Cab Postal Service tour, they're playing uh, "Enjoy the Silence" Tell at, me, the, at the end. You going? Tommy got me tickets for my birthday. Oh, for the Columbus yeah, show? Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 it's gonna be cool. Yeah, they're covering. They've been doing that for every every show that's awesome um and then i would say my chemical romance is up there for sure with like the the struggling emo vibe that i can't ever seem to escape um it's just a core part of who i am and then if there's any like poppy influences one of them is going to be guster i love dude love, guster i didn't know you like guster. oh i love guster dude oh my God. um lost and gone forever Keep It Together, and Ganging Up on the Sun. All three are front to back, no misses. They're such good albums. Yeah, they're great. And then if I really had to lean into pop, and I'll take the judgment, I am a fanson of Hanson. Oh, the Hanson dude, Brothers, they, they rip. I love they rip. I they rip. I love Hanson. They did an album of all of their songs, not all of them, but like a select few songs, with the Czech National Orchestra, and it is just, oof, it is beautiful. Mbop with the full orchestra? Dude! <laughs> that sounds sick. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, that was probably my top four. You yeah. know, like an off beat kind of one would be like all the square like games. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Kingdom Hearts, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. A lot, a lot like, of video game influence. All of yeah. that stuff is just so. Like yeah. perfect minecraft minecraft's music dude. dude the minecraft i actually i haven't played much but uh my wife she plays a lot of minecraft and like i could literally just sit there and listen to her play like just listen to the music yep it's so good my spotify wrapped this year was like all pop punk but then it said top genre lo-fi beats oh so dude like, I, yeah i love i don't have a specific artist but i wake up i brush my teeth to that like, I, I can do anything to drive to work, drive back from work, read a book, go on a walk, anything. It's Honestly, great. you know, I had a big, probably that the influence hasn't shown itself yet, but the lo-fi mm -hmm. chill girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, like yeah. That, that's oh, a huge yeah. influence for sure. It's I so literally good. put that, I, I used to put that on every morning. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> sorry, we just kind of yeah, spiraled sorry. out of control <laughs> here. Yeah. You asked, so, you know, I mean. <laughs> uh, okay. Can you tell me how Never Summer formed, how the band all got together, each member and stuff? Uh, I'll take it. Yeah, you have yeah. to start. So, uh, Andrew and I used to be a part of a group called Cotter that um, we interviewed a few years ago. And all great people. We just had creative differences, so we went our separate ways. And, uh, and Mario was also in another group that just kind of went off and did its own thing. And our drummer kind of went off really and did his own thing. It wasn't a group. Eh. Well, everybody, basically, none of our things had worked out. Um, and then we all kind of got together. And the first rule was, okay, music's great, but we want to make sure that we're enjoying ourselves. We just want to have fun. Yeah, we want to have fun. And then that will bleed into the music. It'll make our shows more fun. It'll, like, you'll actually want to go to band practice. And, you know, um, and we've stuck true to that. So basically, it's like the amalgamation of loss. And then we just kind of picked up the pieces and built Never Summer. And how did you come up with the name for the band? Uh, well, <laughs> there was a poll. 
There was we were actually <laughs> there, we, we had, were a lot of names. There was yeah. like a month where our name was dressed to kill. Uh huh. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure we still submit like all of our like songs on the Google Drive under the dress to kill. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. But uh, Kenny showed up to practice one day and he just had a whole notepad. Because at one point we were just like dress to kill is too much. It's like too. It puts too much stress on having to like we gotta dress up nice now <laughs> yeah like, that was, that was we, we can't we can't do that but like he so we, he came to practice one day we sat in the parking lot at dude locker in a little circle with this notepad with like 50 band names and he had just like <laughs> had a like lucid dreamt up in the middle of the night and like we just all picked our top three yeah. and like never summer was just the one that stuck yeah, I mean, we all eventually were like, "Well, yeah, it's fitting for Ohio." Yeah, like, yeah. Essentially, like. And now, it, now it's it's turned into a uh, a running joke where it's like we can't play in the summer, or there's <laughs> never summer industries. Oh man. Which is a snowboarding company, which I don't yeah. think there will be any conflict because music snowboarding is totally different things. But our drummer gets on Instagram and comments on every single <laughs> photo they post. Every single He's photo. Stop that. Yeah. Take <laughs> no, they finally liked one of his comments. Yeah. They it's liked it. Dude, it's a snowboarding company. If we could right. get promoted, oh, dude. That's what I mean. It's like it's like it's like expecting like a, like a surfer bro to like get pissed at you for something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, that's that's how that came about. What city is your band based out of? Columbus, Ohio, 614. 614, dude. Sick. <laughs> yeah, we haven't played a show outside of Columbus yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but soon. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we, we were just on the, actually, when you joined the call, that's what we were on the phone about. <laughs> Talking about getting out of town, going on mini tours, doing all that stuff. Yeah, like me and Howard and our drummer, Joey, he, we all went to the same high school. Oh. Huh? Like, I, like, Howard was a grade above me, mm -hmm. and I remember at one point in high school, like, I tried to form a band with Joey, and, like, he got shitty and then left, so I had one of Howard's friends try out for the band I was playing on, and Howard showed up at my house, and that was, like, the first time I met him, and his friend was, had brought his whole drum set into my basement, and that was, that was I remember looking at Howard and being like, I feel like we'd be friends, but I know we're not going to become friends right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Ten like, years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ten years later. It, it's just like, yeah, you know, like, you know, it's a friend of a friend, but, like, you never, you, like, you kind of run with the same group. But you never well, it, it's wild, too, because one of uh, one of my good friends who's helped, that he helped me out with Cotter. He's helped out a little bit with Never Summer. He, like, kind of is like our guardian angel that keeps an eye on us and makes sure that we're in the right direction is, uh, is Will Dealey of Beartooth. Who also went to high school with us? Yeah. Like it's like the everybody feathered out and like went and did all their own things, and it turns out ten years later the circle's still very small. Well, it's crazy oh, yeah. too how like I went to school with Bridget and you guys like. Oh yeah, I've known both, Bridget since I was like, yeah, fourteen. Yeah, yeah, that's so crazy too. Mm -hmm. Like one of my friends who I went to college with, I found out like she knows these goofballs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, one of his best friends I was drinking coffee with. She ever brought brought up Atlanta coffee? I oh, think man. so. Her, Maria, Heather, and myself would sit there like third when I was like thirteen years old to twenty, we'd just sit there for hours and drink coffee and talk. It's great. Wild. The circle's very small. And every time I hear something about this and someone's like, Oh, Columbus is the biggest small town in the country, it really is. Like it yeah, there's one point two million people in the metro, but the bubbles, they I don't know what what's so magnetic about them, but they all stick together. For better or for worse. Well, the Columbus also just has a really good music scene for like what we're what we're playing. Yeah, true. So it's it's very beneficial to you know be playing the style the style of music we are playing in a city like this because it's just like there's so much support from the community here. Yeah. And it's you know I love Columbus. We got a good crowd. For and sure. you know I think Columbus loves us. Yeah. At least I hope they do. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what what about like the radio station there? Do you, they give support to the local bands? Absolutely. Uh, ninety two nine. CD ninety two nine. They like every hour. They they do like a local uh, local, local showcase. Spot. 
where they, they showcase a, a local band. Um, oh, just on? Yeah. So, We're going to get on there. We're going to get on there. If you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, they have a venue out here. And, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's on the road. They have big room bars. They're venue. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. It's so, really yeah. like one block from where I live. Mm-hmm. So, last year, uh, on my 30th birthday, I played big room with Cotter. That was Cotter's last show. And then this upcoming Sunday is going to be my 31st birthday, and we're just, like, in talks to move back into Big Room to go to Ace of Cups, another bigger place around here. Um, just play bigger venues and, and do more stuff. It's all it, it all takes time, and that's okay. As long as we're having fun doing it. Right. Okay, we're going to dig in a couple of your songs. Um, memory. Um, there's a line in there. It says, the wall's are closing in on me, I refuse to be a memory. Can you tell me a little bit about that? And you guys, you want to talk a little bit about your part in playing on the song? So the chorus for that song is a two-parter. I wrote the first half, Kenny wrote the second half. Um, We played them into each other. And that line was, the walls are closing in on me, I refuse to be a memory, was a direct reference to losing my old man which was, I'm like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Uh, I was in a rut for months after, uh, <clears throat> after Cotter had broken up and I, I didn't know, didn't know what to do, but I knew I didn't want to stop. So, you know, like the walls are closing in on me. is kind of like a, like the anxiety, the pressure, the, all of the, the voice inside your head telling you not being the nicest person to you. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be a memory. I'm not done yet. So that was it. It's kind of like a you turned it into a positive. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm fighting back. I refuse to be a. And that's why, yeah, like, it's, I, like the emphasis on that that line is uh, like when I say memory, I strain the absolute hell out of my voice on purpose. Because it's, it's not a necessarily a hard note to hit, but it, I want to emphasize the fact that like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm not done yet. Like we're we're still going. I mean, I never, I never, I didn't have any part of writing the lyrics for the song, but like I, when I hear that part, I think of just like, you know, the walls are closing. I mean, you're like backed into a corner. Yep. You kind of like, you have no choice but to like, fight. Like pressure makes diamonds. You know, you've got to like stand up for yourself. Like. That's where you just sit there and you're like, I refuse to be a memory. Like, I want, I don't care, like, how much pushback I'm going to get. Like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Or I'm going to do what, like, makes me happy or whatever, whatever it is. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, you can sing a song to a thousand people for one reason. And they'll sing back to you for a thousand different reasons. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, find your own meaning in it. Yeah. Like, that's ours. Well put. Well put. song is underwater and you say take me down below underwater holding on to hope for another and it kind of sounds like a little bit like that song too with like the meaning like you're fighting back and there's still hope well underwater was um we have an unreleased music video for cotter that we just it's just, I have a copy saved on my hard drive, um, but it'll never go anywhere. And we threw a party. Um, one of my, my first friend from high school, his name was Paul Oberst, great guy. 
uh, he showed up to the party and we're all having drinks and we're like, we literally paid our cameraman who shot our other music videos. We're like, we're going to pay you to show up and get drunk. Just make sure you have the camera rolling. And he did. He shot an awesome music video and also partied while he was doing it. It was such a fun time. Um, but again, our, our friend Paul was there and he got a few shots of Paul, but not a lot. And four days later, Paul thought he was doing ecstasy, which turned out to be laced with fentanyl, and he died. And that line is, take me down below underwater, is like, take me to my friends. And holding on to hope for another is like, I hope to God no one else has to go through this. Um, and it was really surreal after he had passed, and we talked to the guy who had worked on the music video. I was like, is he in there? Is he in there? There's, there's some shots of Paul. I know he's there. And yeah, there's two or three scenes where he had slowed down to like 64th speed because Paul just walks by. Um, but to like really emphasize that he was there. And Underwater was was like a, I mean, it's a song about drug overdose. You know, I, I lost my buddy to fentanyl, which is a very Midwestern Ohio thing. And I hate that I had to, had to write that down or do anything for it. But it, it is what it is. You know, it's uh, the... The whole song, like, uh, one more hug, one last kiss. Like, I didn't have a chance to say what I wanted to say. And just, you know, big bummer. Big, big sad. And, um, you know. Well, our high school is no stranger to it. We yeah. Were, yeah, people we, used to call our high school heroin high. Yeah. I mean, we were. It's true. Our, our high school was on, I mean, we were on 60 Minutes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we're from a town called Pickerington, Ohio. Yeah. Which even on the local news is like when they show the weather forecast, they don't show Pickerington. Like it's that insignificant. They have to zoom in really far and then they'll show a little blip that says Pickerington. But 60 Minutes came out and drove through Pickerington talking about how bad heroin is in Ohio. It's it, it's bad. Well, it was. I don't know if it is anymore. But it, it this was lives. this was in 2000, what, 9 through 12? So it's been, I mean, it's 23 now, so it's been a long, a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it essentially, like, it was no stranger to any of us. And you know what? When I, you know what, I would see all those people that I, I unfortunately knew doing heroin, and it made me very sad, and I don't know how to handle my emotions, so I just tell jokes. So I'd be like, the only H I do is Howard. <laughs> the silence is so loud in this room. <laughs> Thank you. Kenny, do you want to do you want to be our singer? <laughs> Please. No, dude, it's good. It's good. Okay, what do you guys got planned for the upcoming year? We got a new song in Pipes. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we have five to seven, we're not sure yet. It really depends on where we allocate our money, but we want to be in between five and seven songs and do nothing but play shows. You know, like now we have a good repertoire where if somebody wants an EPK, they, they're, here's five to seven high quality songs where you can get like a good gauge of what we sound like and who we are. 
and we just want to play all the shows we can. So we're going to kind of get through that, through the spring, and then summertime, it's just feet to the ground running, playing every show we can. We're about to uh, potentially, potentially hire management um, to really just, I mean, tour the eastern seaboard if we can, you know. Yeah, and we have a show in Toledo. Yeah, oh, we yeah, do. We have Toledo. In yeah. February. Is it February 2nd? Is it? I think it's February 2nd. What's the venue called? Prime Nightlife. Prime Nightlife in Toledo. Um, and then is the other one? Is that confirmed? I mean, they made an Instagram post about it, and they said, they didn't say our name, but, like, they said six local bands, but, like, I mean... I don't know when this is gonna come out, but like, <laughs> you can. Do you want to say it? I don't know. I don't know either. We're so new. We're so, yeah, we're so yeah. fresh. We don't know how to. We don't know how to do this. We might um, have a show on January 11th. So yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> it would be. That would be our next show. It would be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we can just go ahead. And I say mean, it, it is. It's it's, it's, it's Kosai after dark. We're gonna yeah. do. We're gonna do Kosai. It's gonna be fun. I've never been to Kosai after dark, but it's me sounds neither. I've I've been to it. It's fun. Um, the whole theme is art. There's a uh, body modification, so it's like all tattoo. It's like what is it? A uh, hell uh, hell city tattoo or something like that. I don't know. It's like a bunch of tattoo shops are gonna be there. Um, but yeah, it's it's like a 21 plus event. So it's only an adult set, a place he went to as a kid. Yeah, so COSI is, is like a science exhibition in Columbus. And normally it's geared towards kids. Uh, yeah, is but, it like short for Columbus like Science Center? Yeah, something is like that. Is that what it is? Um, but it's, yeah, they close it down every now and again and just have like booze and science for adults or body modification or whatever it is. Yeah. COSI is really cool. Yeah, they're going to have, they're going to have like flash tattoos like going on and stuff. I was reading it today. So oh, they are, they are doing yeah, flash they, tattoos? Yeah, they are doing flash. Okay. Um, but yeah. It's All right, gang, like come on that. out. We'll hang out with you. You get a tattoo. Maybe we'll get a tattoo. Oh, I'll summer. That's it. Cross your chest. That's right. Right here. <laughs> Big old, you know, collar piece, you know, it'll Face be good. tattoo. That's it. It'd be good. And then an S <laughs> <laughs> on each cheek. How can we get a hold of you? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're on everything but TikTok. We, yeah, are, we have a TikTok. We have a TikTok. We just don't really post on it. Yeah. Um, so the the thing is about this band is that we're egregiously bad about social media. We're getting better. Uh, we're getting better. We're, we're, getting we're better. slowly I getting better. I posted something today. That's yeah. you. Did you guys see that? I did. I did. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. We essentially had I'm a, the worst. We essentially had to teach media. Kenny how to use Instagram. Yeah. But. Well, we're just we're just very uh, you know very old school where it's like you want to know what I'm doing, just call me. But that's not the way the world works anymore, and that's fine. You know, we're adjusting to it. But yeah, we're on everything. Uh, we are technically on TikTok, but I don't know if anyone in the band actually checks it. I mean, what's our fax number? <laughs> you can page me. Hit me up on MySpace. I got Friendster and Zanga. My, Let's my go. That's right. <laughs> Blackberry Messenger. Let me just shoot you my pin. Let's go. Yeah, you, you need to throw that into some song lyrics right there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like our, our Instagram handle is just Never Summer Band. Same with Facebook. It's the same on Facebook. Same on Facebook. Um, Do we have a Threads? Uh huh. Did we talk about doing this? We have a Threads. Nobody's posted to it, but we have one. Okay. We have things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the best way to contact us Facebook and Instagram, for sure. Mm -hmm. There's always someone checking either of those. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on the show today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I just, I gauge how well we did by how often you laugh. And I think we had a good laugh to time ratio here. So I, mean, I had a good time. I hope you had a good time. You know? That's the most important, that's that's, most important thing. Yeah. Right. Like hopefully some of us being goofballs make people laugh and you know, whatever. We're, uh, we're very thankful that you brought us on, man. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's great. This was fun.